you know, there's some stupid phrases out there right now. Quiet quitting. Have you heard about this one? Quiet quitting is uh, Generation Z deciding they're not going to bring their whole self to the office. Someone decided to call it quiet quitting. doesn't mean they're quitting. They're not quitting their jobs. Uh, they're just quitting trying to have their job define who they are. They're going back to the Gen X mentality of you go to work, make money, and then you live your best life wherever. Uh, as opposed to the millennials who wanted their jobs to uh, connect to their soul in some way. Quiet quitting, nonsensical phrase. The other one that's kind of annoying is the vibe shift. This comes from an article a while back of someone talking about vibes and vibe shifting. Now everybody uses the phrase vibe shifting. You kind of get a sense more than quiet quitting. This one kind of makes sense, though. There is a vibe out there, and, and you feel it shifting. And Democrats right now and much of the media feel like the vibe is shifting away from the GOP. And, in fact, there's a lot of polling out there that suggests uh, Democrats are, are having their second win in large part because of the abortion issue. A lot of Democrats who were disaffected, were sitting on the sidelines, have now decided that they're going to fire up and go vote. I think that the vibe shift, uh, to the extent that it is real, you can reflect it in the trend lines of Joe Biden's approval. And again, uh, polling itself these days aren't great. Uh, there are lots of flaws in polling. But the trend lines in polling, you can kind of get a summation when all the pollsters are showing the same trend lines. You kind of get a sense that there is something going on. Joe Biden's approval has trended up. It's not great, but it's trended up. The Democrats and the generic ballot, they've trended up, although the GOP uh, is still ahead in the generic ballot. And that's the one that's most telling to me. And I want to focus real quick on the, the CBS battleground poll. You need to understand one of the reasons that polling is out of whack nationally, and it's even worse at the state level, is the number of people who have to be reached out to in order to um, in order to get an accurate sample. I am one of those people who, if I don't recognize a phone number now, I don't answer it. And it may be a pollster, but I don't answer it. Republicans have that propensity more than Democrats. Black and Hispanic people have that propensity more than white people. And as black and Hispanic people move to the GOP and you got a lot of Republicans who already don't answer the phone, well, the, the whole trend is away from accurate polling. So you have to look at the trend lines and not the actual uh, individual polling to get a sense of where things are headed. What I find interesting, though, and I do want to be somewhat hypocritical here and focus on one poll, but it's actually a poll that has a common trend among polls. The CBS Battleground poll. Keep in mind, again, that uh, national polling is spread out around the country. So if you're calling a bunch of people, you get a lot of people in well, blue states. They may identify as Republican, but they're going to be liberal. You call Democrats in a red state, you, you may get a Democrat who's actually conservative and has a propensity to vote uh, Republican. Why I like the CBS battleground poll is they ignore all the states except the battleground states. What I find very interesting here is they asked of Democrats, would you ever consider voting for a Republican this year? 11% said yes. 11% said not sure. 78% said no. Many of those not sures are people who want to say yes, but they don't trust the pollster. So basically 22% of Democrats would consider voting for a Republican. Now, what about the Republicans? 83% uh, say never, 10% yes, 7% no. So 22% combined would be yes or maybe uh, for the Democrats, only 17% for the GOP. I think that's notable. And 20% of voters would consider not voting. Here's the problem with the vibe shift for the Democrats. As I have mentioned so ad nauseum, I, I only want to, want to say it very briefly here. Uh, summer and fall polling tends to benefit Democrats because Republicans aren't answering the phones. You get into the late fall, you get into the likely voter surveys. And by the way, the CBS battleground poll is of likely voters, not registered voters. And it's got a plus two Republican generic ballot, which if it's undercounting the GOP voter intensity this year, could be a plus four Republican turnout. Other polling is still using registered vote voting, and we haven't seen that shift yet. When you get to likely voters, people who have voted, have a propensity to vote, and say they're going to vote, you're going to see a Republican surge in the ballot. So the Democrats are taking their vibe shift not so much off of what the reality is, but off of the media giving them attaboys for passing an agenda. And after the, the late summer, early fall polling that already has a bias towards them, and they're patting themselves on the back saying, there's been a vibe shift there's been a vibe shift here's the problem for their vibe shift it shifts back it can go in the other direction 
And I suspect it will, and here's why. Because if you get into multiple polls, and again, focusing on individual polls isn't necessarily smart. You gotta look at a lot of polls together, but all of the polling out there has a couple of things. One, inflation and the economy are still the biggest issue. Two, voters are deeply dissatisfied with Joe Biden and the Democrats on inflation. Even if they're not impressed with Republicans, they're deeply upset with the way the current party in power is handling things. And then there's this. Majority of Americans think we are in or headed into a recession. Chuck Todd on C on NBC's Meet the Press a few weeks ago said uh, he thought th the old rules of politics don't normally apply or may not apply this year. I think he's wrong. And I think there is, to some degree, uh, some sigh of relief in the Democrats getting things done in the mainstream media. The mainstream media does, I think, to some degree, tend to lean left. They don't really like Republicans right now because of Trump. They don't like Trump, so they don't like the Republican Party. They're more hostile to Republicans now than they otherwise would be, uh, all things being equal. So they're really concerned about all the polling that showed a big GOP momentum because they knew that some of the Republicans they really hate could get elected. And so they're telling themselves that the old rules don't apply, and they're also doing that to keep you focused on the election so you don't tune out, so you don't think it's a sure thing. That's going to hurt them, though, overall, because complacency was how the Democrats could actually win. When you have fired-up Republicans who know it's not a done deal and they got to show up and vote, well, those Republicans, they're going to show up and vote. And that's going to hurt the Democrats. And then there's the actual mood of the nation, the actual vibe of the nation. In all of the polling, more than 70% of Americans are unhappy with the direction of the country. In all of the polling, majority of Americans believe our worst days are ahead of us, not behind us. In all of the polling, the economic mood is very sour. And in all of the polling in the swing states, Democrats are in a world of hurt. So forget California and forget New York, forget the big blue states. What about the swing states? What about the Wisconsin's and the Pennsylvania's and the Ohio's and the Georgia's and the Arizona's and the Nevada's? That's not going to go well for Democrats this year. It's just not going to go well in those swing states this year because the mood of the country is sour towards them, and most people think even worse is coming. On top of that, you've got Jerome Powell, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, who says actually that uh, the people who can afford inflation the least are the ones who are going to ha have the, the brunt of the damage. They're the ones who are going to have the burden. They're the ones who are going to pay the cost. It is the poor and the middle class who are going to suffer the most as interest rates go up and inflation is still out of control. That's Jerome Powell saying that, acknowledging that the poor and middle class are going to have a very tough time. The Democrats passed their Inflation Reduction Act and then chose to bail out rich kids from their student loans. That's not going to go over well as it seeks in, seeks in what, what actually happened. Inflation is still going up. Maybe not as much, but it's going up. Interest rates are going up even higher. And now we're starting to see a housing crisis take shape. People cannot afford to get out of their starter houses. People cannot afford to buy new houses. People who bought into houses thinking they could flip them real quick are now starting to realize they're going to have to hold on to houses because people can't afford to buy them. We're headed into a housing crisis. The Home Builders Associations of America all say we're already in a housing recession. This is a problem when people's uh, investments go down. People bought a house for $400,000. The price of the house is going to start going down with the market. They're suddenly going to start finding themselves upside down in their houses. These are all real problems people are about to start having. And it's probably going to happen before the November election. The vibe will shift again. It has been and it remains the economy. Republicans have license to focus on these cultural issues because of the economic issues. The Democrats, however, they're in such a bubble right now, they really do think that abortion is going to galvanize them. In New York City, I don't deny it, in Washington, D.C., in Northern Virginia, in New York, in Chicago, in Los Angeles, uh, Democratic voters who may have sat home with apathy, they're going to go with gusto now because they want to protest Dobbs. They want to fight for Roe v. Wade. They want abortion rights. They will be fired up and they will go. But in Iowa, in Ohio, in Pennsylvania, in Georgia, is abortion really going to dominate the discussion over inflation, jobs, the economy, and the cost of living? I don't think so. And the battleground survey from CVS, which only focuses on those states, doesn't think so. 
The other battleground surveys, individual state surveys in those states suggest that's not going to be the case. So the Democrats in their bubble, they're convinced the vibe has shifted. And the problem with the vibe shifting is it can shift back. And I assure you, it is going to shift back. As the polling moves from registered voter polling to likely voter polling, the GOP will appear to have even more momentum. And despair will set back in on the Democrats. They will think they have turned the corner, and they haven't. They got some things accomplished. They did. They pushed through their Inflation Reduction Act as a reconciliation package in the Senate. Guess what? A majority of Americans don't think it'll fix the climate, even though they think that's what it mostly focuses on, because that's what it does focus on. Americans don't think it'll fix inflation. In fact, a majority of Americans think it'll make it worse. And nonpartisan economists think the student loan bailout will make inflation worse. The Democrats don't seem to have a fix on it. Republicans have no answers right now, let's be honest. They have no answers. And voters probably would like to hear what the Republican solution is going to be. But they don't necessarily have to hear it because the Democrats control everything right now. And the Democrats not only have no answers, the Democrats are not very good at dealing with the economy right now. And the voters are mad about that. So, yes, Democrats got some wins, and the media gave them good headlines. And the good headlines and the wins in Congress gave Joe Biden a little bit of wind at his back. But a hurricane is coming in the economy, and that is not going to be good for those in the sailboats of the Democratic Party.